good. You're looking for more examples on integration with trig substitution so that you can understand the process better by seeing it repeated. And that's marvelous. Uh, this, oh, bugger, come on. I have a master's degree. Can you believe that? This is example two. Uh, let's say we want to find the integral of 1 over x squared times the square root of x squared minus 9 dx. Now, this is a dead giveaway that we're doing integration by trig substitution because this is a square root of x squared minus a number. And so in step one, we build a right triangle one of whose sides is that side. Uh, it, it's got a minus, not a plus, so it's got to be one of the legs. And the other two sides are the square roots of those numbers. X is bigger than 3. Uh, we know that because the square root of X squared minus 9 has to be a positive number. So the, the other two sides are X and 3, and X is the bigger one. Step two says we make a substitution for everything with an x. And so that, let's change color just to make things more straightforward. How do we do that? Well, we make two comparisons. We compare the linear term to the constant term and we compare the radical to the constant term. What's x over 3? Hypotenuse over adjacent. What's x squared? My, oh, it's the square root over 3. That's opposite over adjacent. So why do we do this? Because we know that x is 3 secant theta, which means dx looks like this, right? So now, x squared is this squared. The radical is 3 tan theta. And dx is this piece. So when all the dust settles, there's a, there's a tangent canceling out with a tangent. There's a 3 canceling out with a 3. Uh, there's, a, there's a secant canceling out with one of those. But 3 squared is still left. And this secant only cancels out with one of those. You get 1 over secant. You get 1 over secant. Well, this is the daggone easiest step three ever. Step three says you figure out what this is. And we did. We did. Wasn't even bad. So then step four says you substitute back. Which means we have to know what sine theta is. Well, what's sine theta? Sine theta is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And we're done. That's the whole thing. That's the whole shooting match. I will do one more. Uh, let's pretend that we were trying to find the integral of x squared over 1 plus x squared dx. What's the giveaway that this can be done with trig substitution? Well, this is an x squared plus a perfect square. So we can look at this like that. And that is how we're going to do it. So in step one, we're going to build a right triangle, one of whose sides is this radical. And this radical has a plus sign in it, so it's the biggest side of the triangle. It's the hypotenuse. 
The other two sides are 1 and x, and it literally does not matter where you put them. It does not matter where you put them. If you put them this way, you're going to use tangent and secant. If you put them the other way, you're going to use cotan and cosecant. Either way, you will get an integral that is doable. Uh, we're going to figure out the relationship between the linear term and the constant term. We're going to figure out the relationship between the radical and the constant term. Uh, this function is tangent theta, and this function is secant theta. Why do we care that x is tan theta? Because it tells us what dx is. And we need that for when we go to step two. In step two, we replace everything that smells like our x with something that smells like theta. What's x squared? Well, x squared is tan squared theta. The denominator is the radical squared. Well, the radical squared, that's secant squared theta. And the dx, that's this. So that's the integral of tan squared theta d theta. Well, now it's up to us to evaluate that integral. And as we've already done in a previous video, we use a Pythagorean identity to do this. This involves flipping back in your notes uh, one or two pages. And so this is tan theta minus theta plus a constant. And then all that's left for us to do is substitute back. Oh, I'm so committed to my color scheme. What's tan theta? Well, tan theta, that's x. What's theta? Well, theta is the angle whose tangent is x. It's the angle whose tangent is x. And we're done. The process runs the same every single time. Every single time, the process is the same. We set up a right triangle where the radical is one of the sides. We make comparisons, linear to constant, radical to constant. We substitute, evaluate, and sub back. I hope these are two helpful examples. Uh, there are others listed on that watch page for you to take a look at in the OpenStax book.